everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial. And today we are painting the brand new I'm Here Hearth Guard. Sent to me early by Games Workshop to paint up for all of you. And well, massive thanks to them. And I'm very excited to paint these. These are the hench boys of the Leagues of Votan. And we're going to be painting them up in the same style as the rest of my personal Great Ethereum League inspired scheme. Now what we're going to be doing is the same thing that we've been doing on a bunch of the units where we're going to be painting the Sergeant in the kind of traditional colours of the Great Ethereum League with a few little enhancements and we're going to be painting one of them up in the same colour as the rest of my personal custom scheme. So with all that in mind we're going to jump in we're going to start painting them and the first colour we're going to be using is Imperial Fist and we're going to be doing it all over the armour of the one that is going to be kind of in our traditional scheme well no in our custom scheme whereas on our sergeant we're going to be painting this just over a couple of little heraldic areas so starting with the sergeant what we're going to do is we're going to take that imperial fist and we're going to paint this over the top of this knee pad the left knee pad now you could do this any way you like. Now, if you're going to paint the traditional box art colour, you either put it on the left knee or on the right knee, and this is to indicate kind of squad or, in this case, which kin host this particular thane. I think it's a thane, probably has a different name. I'm going to paint it all over that knee pad like that. In addition, I'm going to paint this over the top of the shoulders at least this kind of central pad just here it's eventually going to be a stripe but rather than layering up what is going to be pterodon turquoise over the top of this it's just a lot easier to put the imperial fist down first and then put the pterodon turquoise down afterwards I'm going to get that all over like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side as well. Just like that. Like so. However, on our other one, what we're going to do is we're going to paint this all over, excluding that knee pad and the helmet. This is the helmet just here. I'm not going to be painting over that. I just want to get this Imperial Fist all over like this. So with that done, we're now going to do the reverse. We're going to paint pterodon turquoise over these kind of different details. So for example, here we're going to paint pterodon turquoise on the knee and on the helmet. And on this, on the thane, on the sergeant, we're going to apply the pterodon turquoise all over the armor. Because it's this kind of slightly darker green-ish color that we've seen on the box art to other things that have come out brief previously. But of course, you could, I've got a bit of schmutz there on the end of my brush, you could do the Croxagor scales first to get a little bit more of a hint of blue in there. We're going for a real kind of turquoisey colour here. But it's just much darker. There we go. Got that pterodon turquoise on that knee. And of course, we are going to do this on the domed helmet as well.
popping them to one side. And now, I'm going to paint pterodon turquoise over the entirety of this model. So with that done, as you can see, one thing to point out is that we just left a strip of yellow right in the middle of each of those shoulder pads, and that's going to be important for later. But you'll notice that they are a slightly different colour, and that's intentional. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to add some shading. Now the first one we're going to do is Pox Walker, and we're going to be playing, painting it over the top of our pterodon ter turquoise thing. So we're just going to get this and start applying this all over just like this. And we're also going to apply this over the top of the pterodon turquoise areas. On our yellow one. So with that done, I'm then going to take some Sons of Horus green. I'm going to thin it down a little bit more than normal, because what we're going to do is we're going to use this to just smooth out any inconsistencies that we might have, for example, on those shoulder pads where it's just a slightly too green. So we're just going to apply this over the top. So with that done, it seems only fair that we shade all of the yellow. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Cassandra yellow and we're going to use this, as mentioned, over the top of all of the yellow. So with that done, all of our colors from this point out are going to be consistent across both of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop and change between them, but the color we're going to be using next is Flesh Terrors Red. I'm going to be using this to paint the kind of pipes around the back here. Like that, as well as the internal lining for any of your bareheaded iron here. So with that done, I've also added some flesh toes red to that uh, tassel there on the back of the Hase here, as I've just read in the book, <laughs> not the uh, thane. So what we're going to do now is going to move on and the next color we're going to use is Black Legion. I'm going to be applying this to, well, a number of the remaining details. So we're applying this over the top of all of our ribbed cables. For example, this one just here like this. We're applying this to the casing on the bolt gun. Bolt gun? It's a Volkite. It's a Volkite pistol. It's not a bolt gun. <laughs> and we're going to be playing, applying this to the kind of servo joints in the armor as well as the casings on the other two weapons, including the bits that we've not painted just here on the blade. So with that done, what we're then gonna do, we're gonna take some Gilliman flesh. I'm gonna apply this 
over the top of the head. So with that done, it's now time to work on one of those enhancements I talked about earlier, and that is going to be these blades. Now, in the box art, we have that kind of fiery plasma blade that they have on the kind of things it's like the Berserks and on Uthar the Destin, for example. However, the yellowy orange won't really work very well with the yellow armored guys, and I need to have consistent plasma blades across all of them. So what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna do purple plasma blades. So, the colour we're going to be using is Luxion Purple. What we're going to do is we're just going to load up our brush here and we're going to paint this over the top of the blade. So, we're going to, just like this, get it all over like that. Then, we're going to wash the brush. And whilst it's still wet, we're going to absorb the majority of that paint off the tip of the blade. Just like that kind of blending it out to the undercoat underneath, just like this. Now I'm just going to do the same thing on the underside as well. Just whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors and we're going to use this to paint in all of our silver details. So for example here, on this particular Path guard, we've got the face plate. We've got the mechanical areas and all of the weapons, as well as any of the large kind of rivets and plugs and things. Just like this. So with that Iron Warriors all applied to all of those details, like so, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Screaming Bell and we're going to apply this to all of our gold details. So this is pretty much all of the remaining unpainted areas. So with that screaming bell applied to all of those areas, and as you can see, we've just got one last base coat to apply, and that is going to be Wildwood. I'm gonna apply this to this hair, just up here. So with that done, it is now time to add some shades to our models. And the first one we're gonna add is Drooky Violet. I'm gonna be applying this over the top of that plasma blade. I'm gonna be going all over. So basically what ends up happening is we enrich that Luxion purple and just add a little bit of purple tint to the tip of the blade where we've absorbed most of that paint, like so. So with that Drooky Violet applied, we're then going to take some Drakenhof Nightshade and we're going to apply this over the top of all the silver and all of the black. Now 
And with that done, we're then going to add some Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of the Screaming Bell. So with that done, our I'm Here Hearth Guard are now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. They're already looking pretty fantastic. However, we're not going to leave them there. No, we are going to take them to the next level. We're going to do this by adding some highlights. And the first one we're going to add is Flash Kits Yellow. And we'll be applying this as a highlight to all of our yellow details. This is going to probably take the most amount of time. alongside the other armor color but once it's done the models take a massive leap forward and they absolutely look fantastic so with that yellow all highlighted as you can see what we're going to do now is we're going to highlight the green, well, turquoise. And the color that we're going to be using for that is cyberite green. So with that done, just to finish off the armor on both of them, what we're going to do is we're going to add those markings that we did on the yellow just here. Only this time what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Deepkin Flesh. Now, we are going to be applying a stripe going down this knee pad on this particular iron here hearth guard, whereas over here we're going to be doing a few more. So we're going to take that thin down Deepkin Flesh and we're going to start applying these stripes. So the first one is going to be just down here as mentioned on the knee. This is the one which we're going to do consistently across both of them. So we're just going to draw that stripe in. Just like that. And it might take two thin coats, as you can see. The other one that we're going to do is if any of your hearth guard have got a helmet on, we need to do one over the helmet as well. And basically, these two corners here and here are your guide track. like that and finally on all of our yellow ones we're going to do some stripes going down the middle on the shoulders So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh and we're going to apply this as a highlight and a bit of a feathered edge to our plasma blades. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the Pallid Witch Flesh on our brush and we're just going to start by picking out the edge of the blade.
just like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. A little heavy just there. Just my finger to wipe that away. Just like this. Tidy up this highlight a little bit. Just like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take small amounts of this powdered witch flesh. I'm going to add little tiny little lines going diagonally along each side of the blade in the kind of cutting motion. So we're just going to start doing this kind of thing. All the way along like that. Just like this. So with that done, we have these lovely fizzing and cracking and bright plasma blades. They just look fantastic. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on our other individual detail, and that is gonna be the face on this one. So the color we're gonna be using is Blade One Flesh. We're just gonna be picking out all of those sharp details. face. With that done, we're then going to take a teeny tiny amount of Black Legion and apply this over the top of the eyeballs. And so with that Black Legion applied, we're then just going to take the tiniest, tiniest dot of Screaming Skull. I'm going to apply this in the corner of the eyeball there. I'm going to apply it one in this corner as well, closest to the nose, and then in the far corner, like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down Dark Reaper. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our black details. Now, initially, this isn't going to look like it's doing a whole lot, but that's okay because we want our black details to not be super bright and stark. But we are going to do a little spot highlight after this, so don't you worry. So with that Dark Reaper all applied, what we're then going to do is going to take some Rust Grey. I'm going to add this to the sharpest points on all of those black details. So for example, on this gun, I'm just going to add this to the corners of the gun casing.
So with that done, all of the black details are now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down fulgurite copper. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our screaming bell details. Like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron breaker. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our silver details. But what we're also going to do is we're going to use this to pick out any gems or lenses. So we've got one little light here, there like that. We've got one just there on the, on the plate like that. Whereas otherwise, and all of the other silver details. I'm just going to pick out the edges. So with that iron breaker all applied, there is just one thing left to do and that is to color in all of those gems. So what we're going to do is we're going to use two colors for this. We're going to use Talisar Blue and Flesh Terror's Red. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply the Talisar Blue over the top of any of our kind of gems on the yellow. Like that. And like that. And like that. Similarly, over the top of the visor. Like so. However, we're going to use the Flesh Terror's Red over the top of the gems. on all of our turquoise. And the reason I'm holding them both, because we've got one little light just up here on that helmet there like that. And with that, the Iron Here Hearth Guard are done. And so with their bases complete, the Iron Here Hearth Guard are now finished. And I'm particularly pleased with those plasma blades. I'm not accustomed to doing stuff non-box art. I generally don't like making it up as I'm going along, but I really enjoyed this and I'm thrilled with the final result. I think they look absolutely fantastic. And this is a really, really cool little unit. Again, I'm quite surprised that they're a lot shorter than they are. You know, the Iron Here Champion is quite a chunky boy, but these, they come in a little bit shorter. So yeah, quite a surprising kit all in all. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.